what is SQL injection? As this is only the introduction, we will just be talking quickly about what it is, such that we can get further on and get deep into what exactly it is. So an SQL injection is when an attacker or a malicious user try to inject SQL statements into a web form or any place where you can type in something on a web application in order for him to get access to data that he is not allowed to in the database or to provoke some kind of error enabling him to uh, make further and more advanced attacks. So for example we see here that a user is trying to enter the URL students.com and then this uh, web page has enabled this uh, extension where they say okay you are looking at the student ID 117 so this means that if you, if you enter this URL maybe this is your uh, own user when you're on the site then it will display information for this given student but then the attacker tries to manipulate this and then he will add on this or 1 equals 1 because 1 is always equals 1 and this means that he can get data returned that he's not supposed to and the reason why that is is because when this is getting entered this is what is going to happen on the server side in the web API so they will do a select statement where they will say select all from students where student ID so students is the table containing all the information about students and then th originally they only want to return the information for the user 117 but because we have this 1 equals 1 then all cases and all objects within this table applies to this statement so now we are going to select every data point that we have in the table and just return it because 1 is always equals 1 so our database will say fine I will just select all and then I will return it so the database will return this through the web API return data for every student and then the attacker will now have access to all data that is available within this database of students so this is a very good example of what an SQL injection is and this is actually some of the attacks that we see that larger web applications and million dollar companies are getting attacked by there are of course more advanced way but this summons it up very well and if we just take a quick look at some recent breaches we see here that for example Yahoo were hit by an SQL statement where they used a union based SQL injection attack we will be having a lecture um, discussing what kind of uh, attacks that you can make in SQL injection so you'll be familiar with this union based and they simply just post a password dump of more than 450,000 uh, 450, uh, users and again we see here that Google Maps Google is a large player so Google Maps their WordPress plugin expose more than 400,000 sites due to a vulnerability that made SQL injection possible if they used a specific version of this plugin before it was patched so SQL injection is still even though it's an old attack it is still an attack that is very powerful if you don't protect yourself against it SQL injection attack we have previously touched upon what exactly an SQL injection attack is where we saw a uh, picture of how such worked here we will get a bit more in, in details to fully understand what is going on so basically an SQL injection is when you try to inject SQL code into any field possible in a web application so for example and the picture one right here we have a normal login form and this gives the malicious user a uh, way of inputting SQL uh, statements so for example normally we will just be inputting our email and our password but some people will try to insert SQL statements to try get information out of your database or to drop the database entirely meaning that they will delete all the data so for example here in the email field we have entered test namely example.com or 1 equals 1 slash this and when you, we then look at picture 2 this could be a basic example from Java I know that we are missing a variable name here but don't mind that so for example we have our SQL statement here which based on this login form here takes the email which the users are entering and then uh, fetch all the information about that user 
back to the application such that when he logs in the information is getting shown for example like when you log into Facebook you see your name your age where you're from and stuff like that so here we have a basic SQL statement we have a select all from this table student info where email equals and then we are waiting to add this data that is getting inputted into the email field but since they have inputted the data in this way then let's take a look at how this look in an SQL statement so we take part 3 here and then we have taken the statement that was waiting in the code for user input and if we add this user input we see here that they have based on what they have typed in the end after the email they have manipulated the SQL statement that we wrote originally so now we have a select all from student info where email equals which is what we wanted here then we have again the test uh, email but since they have added this little one right here it is now getting added here and then since their all is getting here they are now saying all 1 equals 1 which is always true so now we are no longer just saying if the email is equal to this one but if 1 is equal to 1 so basically when this is executed all data in our student info table is getting returned meaning that every people's information is getting uh, fetched back to the web application and the way that they can do this is because they have these two at the end meaning that they will comment out our original dot right here and the ending of our SQL so they have just manipulated our SQL statement even though we made it statically right here this is a basic example so pretty much none a web application should should have this but there are still a lot out there that have misimplemented their SQL statements like this so this is a way that a SQL statements or a SQL injection attack works so now let's look at SQL injection types we have different types of SQL injections we have error based we have union based boolean based and time based the error based injection attacks is where we try to trick the backend system to give us some useful information either the data directly from the database which is the best scenario for an attacker but if you cannot get that he just wants to get some information about the tables and the structure of the database so that he can write more accurate uh, SQL injection attacks and then get the information he wants then we have the union based attack we looked at the union uh, command in lecture 2 where we are basically using the union statement to add another select statement so even though we have the static select right here we can by adding a union get a new SQL statement then we have the boolean based injection which is where we try to trick the database to give a response based on a boolean value meaning that if it is true it will act in a certain way whereas if it is false it will act in another way by doing that we can again get some information about the backend and the database structure and then we have the time based which is similar to the boolean except that in relying on a instant true and false value we will be having a time delay indicating whether our statement were true or false so these four are the most common SQL injection attacks and in the next lecture we'll be looking at tools that can be used for automating these attacks such that you can be testing your own web application for uh, weaknesses that a malicious user can use. The last thing that we are going to talk briefly about is mitigation. So a mitigation to a SQL injection is input validation, validate the input that people are allowed to use. For example, never let people use the raw command or 1 equals 1 in an email field because why should they ever write 1 equals 1. Then we have the dynamic SQL, be sure to patch your web server and all the plugins you use so that they are not containing any SQL statements like we saw in lecture 1 where the Google Maps plugin for WordPress has an SQL weakness then be sure to always use the least privilege needed in that database there is no reason for you to have uh, for example uh, the drop ability for a select user so if you are only using a particular user for selecting information then there is no reason to allow that user to either insert or drop an entire table and then we have error messaging be sure that the error messages that is getting returned to the users 
are useful, meaning that it will not um, clear, it will not show any information about your backend, but be s some useful information like this email is wrong or we have an uh, error in the backend, please contact our support, stuff like that, instead of having direct technical messages getting returned.